again everybody I've been asked by quite a few people to do a video that to be honest I never would have thought of doing myself but uh, as I say a few people have asked for it so we're going to give it a shot and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through our motorhome it's a 1990 Eldis Autoquest 270 and show you all the different controls the knobs the levers and the whistles and how we use them now of course this will be probably quite useful to you if you've just brought a 1990 autoquest 270 um, be less useful if you've got a much newer van a really modern van as things i think have moved on quite a bit uh, but uh, in between it might have sort of varying degrees of usefulness but it might be interesting to some folks anyway to see how things have changed anyhow let's get to it Well, in the cab, of course, we have all the normal driving controls for the van. Now, you really do need to know how to drive to go on a motorhome holiday or to have a friend that knows how to drive. If you're considering a motorhome holiday and neither you or any of your companions know how to drive, then that probably is a big obstacle. And uh, the best thing to do really is to take some lessons and pass your test. So we'll skip neatly over the normal van driving controls but i'll pop the bonnet and we'll have a look at the leisure battery now our leisure battery is mounted in the front above the engine i believe it's quite common to have them under the seats as well so yours may well not be here it's connected with a little inline fuse holder and our battery is charged by the van as you drive along, but it isn't charged when you're on electric hookup. We don't have a battery charger that works on the electric hookup. And that is as the van was originally supplied back in the day. So it really is only good for touring, not long stays on sites. Unless you've got electric hookup, because we do carry a battery charger that we can then charge the battery off the electric mains hook up independently. Right, now let's have a look at the water system. So this is the water filler cap. And you can fill this up just with um, a hose pipe or a watering can. We do carry a hose pipe with us for a purpose. And uh, obviously on a campsite, you often have a motorhome service point you can pull up to and fill this tank up. Now, it's not to be confused with the diesel filling point. That may sound obvious, but uh, it's not that uncommon to see on some of the motorhome Facebook groups and such that somebody has filled their drinking water tank with diesel. And uh, then it's a bit of a job, really. <laughs> to try and get rid of that and uh, I think most people end up probably replacing the tanks because um, it really would uh, be quite nasty I think. Now coming inside the van the tank is underneath this dinette seat so I'll take the covers off that and we'll have a quick look. Okay, so you can see there is the tank, you've got the sensor for the level gauge there, and you've got the pump there, which is switched from the uh, Zig unit, which I will show you in due course. Now we also have, amongst the uh, spiders and such, the drain valve. So I do tend to drain the tank after every trip, and that's done just by swinging that over as easy as that and then the water is draining out of the tank and then once the tank is drained 
I will close that again to stop any of these spiders getting in. Really must clean this out. Now once you've filled your tank full of water, you're going to want to uh, bleed the system and uh, turn the pump on. So I'll have left these taps open when I drained the van down after we last used it. So first thing to do is to close the taps off. Now what I tend to do is to fill the tank of water before we leave on our journey. Now, a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people will disagree with that because they will say that's added weight and uh, you're wasting fuel and you're risking your van being overloaded and that sort of thing. So yeah, that's very true. You do need to make sure you're not overloading your van by traveling with full tanks. And uh, also, yeah, you will use a bit of extra fuel. So, uh, Possibly that is not the right thing to do. But the way we tend to travel is often at weekends and it's after work on a Friday. We might be traveling for two or three hours and it'll be quite late when we get to the campsite. So it's just that convenience of being able to roll on the pitch and not have to worry about filling with water and such. And also on a longer trip, we can stop on the way, make a cup of tea, that sort of thing. And of course, you could get around this by just partially filling the tank, just putting in enough to do a little bit of uh, tea making and perhaps a, a round of washing up just to see you through your journey. But anyway, I tend to do it before we leave. So having filled your tank, you need to decide, there's another spider up there, look. you need to decide which battery you want to be on. Now, typically, of course, on the campsite, you'll have it on the caravan battery. Uh, but you can also run it on the car battery. And on our van, both batteries will do all the systems. So you could take the caravan battery out completely and just run on the car battery. But of course, you risk running the car battery flat whilst you're on the campsite. So you tend to only use the car battery, really, when we're en route. So since we're getting ready before we leave, I'm going to switch it to the caravan battery and then I'm going to turn on the pump for the water. And just to note, we also have a level gauge. These are notoriously unreliable, but if I... Oh, I need to have the auxiliary switch down to use the water gauge. Press it and uh, yeah i don't know if you can see that little needle shoots all the way across you can set it with this screw so if it's out you fill your tank and you adjust this screw so that it shows full but uh, really not to be relied on unfortunately so now our pump is on but there will be air in the system probably not a great deal as uh, i have been fiddling with this earlier but uh, yeah, normally there will be a little bit more air in it than that and you'll need to bleed the air out just by opening the taps. No big deal. Although I have heard some people do have issues getting the air out of their system. We've never had a problem with this fan. Does run away very slowly though and that's I think common to a lot of motorhomes. If you fill the, the, ta the sink right up then it does drain a lot quicker. You can swirl your finger out and stuff to get it to, to flow down the plug hole a bit better. I've cleared it out with various different things. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it's just not a very big pipe. You can see it is going down there. It's just very slow. Let's make sure the... Uh, yeah. All is well in the bathroom as well. Now, over here in the back corner of the van is the electrical point where the 240 volt electrics come in. So you'll need yourself a 16 amp extension lead, which is uh, this blue plug thing. And uh, simply lift up the flap, press down this little blue tab. That's not entirely necessary to plug it in and just push into the van. You do have to push down the little blue tab to 
get it out again. Now, of course, you should always plug this end into the van first. You don't want to be wandering around the site with the other end plugged in to the main supply and this end potentially leaking electricity onto the ground where people could tread in it later. So at home, we have the other end going into an outdoor 13 amp socket. But obviously on a campsite, you wouldn't have that. You'd have this section plugged in to your 16 amp supply. And uh, inside the van, in the wardrobe, just have a very uh, simple little box of circuit breakers. That's the main one. And then you've got two circuits there. One I think is the fridge and the other is the main sockets in the vehicle. So what of hot water and such I hear you ask? Well we need to go into the gas bottle locker to get that going. So yeah here in the uh, gas locker you can see the important thing is the gas regulator. Now this is currently off. If you turn it this way and pressing a little peg and turn it that way the gas is now on if you turned it down the other way it releases the regulator for you to change the gas bottle now the hot water heater is underneath the other dinette seat so i'll just open that up for you So underneath the seat here, we have the water heater and it's a carver water heater. Now, of course, you need to make sure that gas tap is on. So the handle is in line with the pipe for the heater to work. Now, of course, I should say that all your gas system and appliances, you should get checked before you use them because... Uh, Obviously, gas safety is a very important thing, and uh, that's not covered by this video. We'll assume that you have had everything checked out, and it is okay. So, to get the hot water going, we're back to the ZIG unit. Make sure the auxiliary switch is on, and uh, our water heater is gas only. There are some that have a 24, no, sorry, a 240 volt immersion in it for if you're on electric hookup. But ours is gas only, so only have the one control to worry about switch that down and uh, you'll see we have the little green light on if any of the other lights are lit up if the amber or red light lit up then there is a problem but uh, we don't need hot water now really so i won't waste the gas i'll turn that off again now this is the outside of the water heater and if you leave in the van in the winter months where it might freeze you need to drain off using this drain plug so just undo that let it drain out and put that back in again the other thing you might want to do when you arrive on a campsite is underneath the van here you will see that nut in the center of the screen there is a jack lowering screw so uh, there is the jack or the side leg and you can lower them onto wooden blocks to give yourself some extra stability if you are on site for a bit of a while. Now, at some point in your holiday, you are almost certainly going to want to use the bog. But this does require a little bit of preparation work. So on this back corner of the van, you have this little door. Now, ours doesn't lock for some reason. That's another little job I need to do to sort that out and uh, inside there you've got this little tank that swings out now you can undo this lid and into there with your hose pipe you can put a little bit of your pink toilet fluid and fill it up with water and you have got a little drain off point there you can undo and uh, there's also a little hose here and you pop this cap off there and uh, that will drain out your flushing liquid for winter time when you leave in the van and it might freeze i'm not going to drain it now because uh, 
has got flushing liquid in it. Now, this here is your toilet cassette where all your wee and your poo goes. And uh, that just slides out like that. Now, ours is a little bit, I'm not sure. <laughs> This thing here, really, I think, I'm sure it's supposed to um, sit in here normally and just sort of flip forward. I don't know. If anyone actually knows what on earth this is supposed to do, I, I'd be interested. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That really seems to do very little. But you can slide it in there when you're carrying it around the site, I suppose. Um, now, before every camping trip, I will lubricate this seal a little bit with some of the Thetford um, toilet seal lubricant. So that's another thing to remember. Uh, so the cassette comes all the way out. Looks like I spilled the blue a little bit last time I filled it. But uh, basically what you want to do is straighten this neck up. And uh, then you can unscrew that. Look at the mess I've made with the blue chemical. Should have really wiped that off, shouldn't I? And uh, you can use this handy cup to uh, dose it with your chemical. And uh, this has already got some blue in, as you can see by the mess I've made adding it. And you also add a little bit of water in there just to uh, keep everything going around and around. I suppose. Yeah, lovely. Well, when you come to empty your cassette, obviously you carry it across the campsite to the emptying point. Uh, remember to press this little yellow button in as you pour out your waste because that releases the air and that lets everything flow nicely out. You don't get that sort of glugging which can cause the dreaded splashback. So now, assuming your toilet is prepared and ready for use, uh, the first thing to do is to open up the lid, because if you don't do that, there's going to be a hell of a mess. Now, after that, things are somewhat in dispute on the internet and the various Facebook groups, but I believe the correct operation is to open the flap See, that's the flap closed, that is the flap open. And uh, then, if you're just going to have a wee, you're kind of done, really. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, but if you're going to have a poo, then there are all sorts of different things that people do. Some folk buy special liner things that you can put in there and sort of flush down into the hole to, uh, I don't know, prevent the old skiddly marks, I suppose, on the pan. But uh, what I tend to do is to place some toilet paper in a bit of a cross shape. There you go, something like that. And that gives you something to aim your bombs at. Now, if you are particularly fortunate, and you have good aim, then as you drop your stick of bombs, that they will fall into the centre there and they will pass through the trapdoor neatly wrapped in the toilet paper and uh, yeah, job done. Otherwise, you're going to have to operate the flushing mechanism. And that is that here. And what you do is you just twist it. And uh, yeah, there you go, look. Flushy, flushy. It's a bit of a, a bit of a knack to it. Yeah, down she goes, down the hatch. And then uh, to prevent your uh, partners becoming overcome with the odours, you simply close the hatch again. Another important thing to remember with the bog in the motorhome is you must never put anything in it that's not come from you or your bog roll. Don't use any of the uh, flushable wipes or you know cleaning wipes and then put them in the cassette. Anything like that. 
will just make a horrible ball of stuff in the cassette that you'll, you won't be able to pour out in a normal way. You'll need to dismantle the cassette to remove that, which uh, is, is not a favourite job, really. Now, of course, we have redone our washroom with the famous dog bowl sink. Um, so yeah, it's just an ordinary tap. So everyone knows presumably how to operate a tap. I fitted this shower and this is a, a thermostatic shower. So uh, this is the temperature adjustment. And this is the water on and off. That's off, that's on. And the shower head here has its own separate switch. So uh, you just press Ah, sorry, that's on, and the other way is off. Yeah, so there you go. There is your shower. And then once you've finished, turn the water off. And there you go, no pressure anymore. Now your van is extremely unlikely to have one of those, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I think this is kind of the thing they fit uh, in some countries as like a bidet type of attachment next to the toilet where you don't have toilet paper as a sort of traditional thing so uh, yeah a handy sort of attachment for a shower anyway so yeah quite enough of that we now have the various cooking appliances with our hob here and the oven underneath now there are some gas taps in this cupboard here one does the fridge and the other does the um, oven and hob so you need to make sure they are both on and on is in fact horizontal so the tap is pointing to the pipe going away from the T. Now our hob doesn't have its own igniter so you do need to turn the gas on and then just light it with some sort of sparky thing and then you're ready to put your kettle on and have a nice brew. Obviously if you want to turn it down onto the minimum setting and that's away from you and that's on a sort of minimum simmer sort of setting and all the way back towards you takes you through the maximum and then back to the off. Now it also has a rather handy grill and that's this middle knob that works in exactly the same way again handy to have your your sparky igniter and you can simply light the grill like that make yourself some nice toast or something and we also have our nice oven here. Now this is definitely non-standard. This has been fitted by a previous owner. You have the, uh, the temperature control knob, obviously. And uh, inside the door you have the little switch to turn the gas on. So yeah, to light the oven, you just simply set the temperature nice and high. Press the red button and uh, light the oven. And you're all set to have a nice pie or something like that. Now, of course, we have the source of a lot of questions that you get on the Facebook groups and such the fridge. Um, now, this fridge is a three-way fridge so it'll work on 12 volt the 240 volt and the gas at the moment obviously it's not working on anything because we're not using the van so i just put this little peg down into the seal of the fridge um, and that holds the door slightly open stops it going a bit manky now this is at the main switch obviously if you've got either of the batteries selected on the zig unit you can put it down to this setting now that's really only for traveling that won't cool your fridge down so ideally you have your fridge loaded up 
before you leave on your trip and your van connected to the 2 volty volt at your house. Now I guess if you aren't able to keep your van on your drive, if you have it in storage or anything like that, then that's going to be harder to do. But uh, that is, I think, probably the idea and that's the way we do it. So we have it connected, running on 240 with all our stuff in it. So you want to leave for your, for your holiday or whatever. So it's on the caravan battery at the moment. So we don't want it on that. We want it on the car battery because we're going to be driving along with our already pre-chilled fridge contents. And then we can put this switch down to the battery setting. And then that will maintain the temperature in the fridge. If you just load it up uh, with sort of ambient temperature stuff, you've just been to the shops or whatever, and all your stuff is at room temperature, put it in, it's going to struggle to bring that temperature down in any sort of quick period. So it really is just a maintenance thing while you're driving along. And obviously this is your temperature setting whilst your fridge is on electric. When you arrive to the site, if you've got electric hookup, once you've connected that, we're on electric hookup here at home. So you can just put it to that setting and then your fridge will operate just like any other fridge really. However, if you haven't got the old electric hookup and you're on your campsite, you don't want to flatten your battery and you're only really maintaining temperature anyway with 12 volt. So the thing to do is to run it on the gas. So I tend to turn it up quite high to light it. And you hold that button in and press the igniter. And once you've done that successfully a good few times, you should see a nice blue flame through the little window in the back of your fridge. Now your last appliance is your gas heater. Now we don't tend to use ours very often. Um, it does tend to collect the dust and stuff. So when you turn it on, there is a smell of uh, burning dust until that's burnt off. And uh, yeah, it's not a, not a pleasant sort of heat really, um, the gas fire. Lots of people replace these with uh, diesel heaters, but ours still retains it. So. Uh, there is a little gas cock in here. There it is. You can see ours is turned off. And yeah, it's just a very similar deal. You turn this knob until it's on the igniter setting and there's a little cutout in the knob that allows you to press the igniter down. Um, now, if it's operating correctly, you won't see much of a flame. If you see a bit of an orange flame through the bottom there, it's probably not in the best condition, so best not to use it and get it checked out thoroughly. As I say, you should get all your gas appliances checked out really before you use the van for the first time. And indeed, you should get them checked uh, subsequently as well, at least annually, so that you make sure no problems have developed. Another key thing in the van is to have a smoke detector and uh, check the batteries in that regularly and a carbon monoxide tester uh, or alarm sorry you, re you really want both of those in your van just to make sure you stay safe and also a fire extinguisher is a good idea there's ours peeping out from behind the curtain now of course there is the small matter of beds now of course there is a bed up here I have slept up here, I do sleep up here when I go away in the van on my own. Uh, little Mia sleeps up here when we have her with us. And this is the ladder, obviously. It acts as a bit of a, a rail to stop you falling out of bed. You can make up the bed downstairs and use these cushions so they will not be present when you're sleeping up the top. Unless, of course, you're on your own and you're sleeping up the top there, in which case can just shove them to the to the front or chuck them down here whatever and of course you can just flip the ladder out now there are some clips on the back of our ladder uh, but there's nothing on here to clip them to Nikki has recovered 
this cushion but it was just like this before anyway I assume the original board cushion would have something to clip this into but anyway we just lean it there and as long as you're careful you can hop up and uh, into your bed <laughs> Now, as you can see, there's not a great deal of headroom up here, and some people don't find this that pleasant. But uh, I, I don't mind it. I'm quite happy sleeping up here when I'm on my own in the van. <laughs> but what if you want to sleep downstairs well you need to make the dinette up into a bed and uh, again that's relatively easy first thing of course is to uh, get rid of your various scatter cushions and such like and then pop the table out some clips that you just need to release underneath and then the table lifts off you can then remove the other cushions got various things under here camping chairs and the leveling ramps and such like which wouldn't normally be there when you were setting up your bed because they'd be in use outside somewhere. Now you extend these boards, just by pulling them. And these little flaps, this one's a bit broken. These little flaps go over there like that. And then we have this thing. Now this came with the van. I don't think it's original equipment, but it's very sensible just to support the end of the table when you pop it in. And then of course you can add the cushions back in. Now this is where you need the cushions that you got from up there to fill in the extra bit. And there you go, there is your bed. Obviously you can add pillows, sheets, duvet to make it into a proper bed. Or of course you could use sleeping bags, I suppose. We tend to use uh, the whole sort of setup with pillows, sheets and duvet. It is a bit of a faff of course, and uh, doing it every night can get a little bit tedious. And that's where I suppose having a motorhome with a fixed bed is uh, advantageous. But obviously a fixed bed in this size van would, would be most of the van. So as you're leaving the campsite, obviously you'll want to disconnect your mains electric. And you'll also want to turn off your gas bottle. Now some model modern vans do have a crash sensor fitted to the gas system which will turn the gas system off in the event of a crash so you can run things like your gas heating as you drive along but not in an old van like this you have to turn the gas off now you'll also probably want to empty your grey waste now you can see our grey waste tank there has got that orange valve on it you have to reach a long way underneath the van to turn ours off it's far from ideal I need to change that you can see a video of where I removed our old rotten waste tank and added this plastic drum somewhere else on the channel. I'll put a link to it. Uh, now, I am going to change this. This is, this is far from ideal, but uh, that tap is open at the moment because I've just put clean water down the uh, drain to demonstrate to you. But uh, that would be closed on the campsite and uh, your tank would be slowly filling up as you use the van. So you use the drive over waste and open that tap to release everything 
down the drive over drain. Now you'll see on the video for the waste tank, we've also got a second waste tank that we can push underneath. So we don't have to move the van if we're on a campsite for a long time. So I think that about covers all the uh, habitation controls and knobs and levers and things in our van. Uh, yours may be totally different. So if you do anything differently in your van to the way we did it, especially if you've got a very similar van, then I'd be very interested to hear from you in the comments or if indeed you've just bought a van like this and uh, you do things slightly differently, then uh, also hit me up in the comments and let me know. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Give the like button a press. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more. Uh...